Thank you so much, Larry. And I want to thank the people for Democratic Party reform. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where everyone is. But it is such a pleasure to gather together with everybody on this Sunday. And so you all have been enjoying two days. This is your second day of coming together to talk about what reform really looks like in the Democratic Party. And somebody has to fight this fight. I certainly believe that we must fight within and also without, outside of the Democratic Party, I should say. And so I'm glad that your organization has taken on the Herculean task of being the ones who fight inside of the Democratic Party. You know, I'm reminded of what one of our great uh, 20th century freedom fighters once said, her name is Ella Baker. And she said, we who believe in freedom cannot, must not rest. And that is what your fight is about. That is what the fight of others who have taken up other mantles is really about. That those of us who are of a conscious mind, those of us who are willing, ready, and able to unite based on what we have in common and to use that commonality to make a difference. And it is especially important because we are in a two-party system in the United States of America. Your work is vitally important. Not everybody could fight the fight inside the Democratic Party because as we know, many folks, especially progressives, have totally given up on the Democratic Party and believe that we need to dim exit. And then there are others of our sisters and brothers who believe that the progressives should not go anywhere and continue to give them hell inside the party and hold them accountable. So I really thank people for Democratic Party reform for again, taking up this cause. You know, I was thinking about what I was gonna say to you this afternoon for me, this morning for others about this journey and how important it is that you, yes, you, do not get weary in well-doing. And so I'm thinking about people for a Democratic Party reform. I thought, hmm, maybe the Declaration of Independence can inform us, and I want you to follow me as I weave together why I am going to set the foundational premise of my words to you today on portions of the Declaration of Independence. So when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind require that they should declare the causes which impair them to the separation, which impaled them to the separation. And I'm thinking about that. And not this organization is within the Democratic Party stand up critiquing what is being done correctly, making known what is not being done correctly, and you are making a demand. The Declaration of Independence was a demand. And this document highlighted three very important things that inform my words to you today. One is it was a document of grievances, a document of affirmation, and a document of action. What were their grievances, you ask? I am so glad that you asked. One, taking care of the public good. Two, representation. Three, the manipulation of the electoral process. Four, harassment that they believed that they were, harassment that they were getting at the hands of the king and the people who were sent to work for the king. And then lastly, were they able to reap the benefits of their bounty? Those were their grievances summed up. They petitioned for redress. In other words, they made the king know that there was a problem. And not only did they not, not only did they make it known that there was a problem, they evaluated whether or not the king was actually going to hear their cry and then do something about it. But they found no action. So they sought help from their British sisters and brothers. 
and none was found. They, and I quote, they too have been deaf of the voice of justice. And that is my foundational premise this afternoon and this morning. Those who are deaf to the voice of justice. And how does that fit for our time? They affirmed that they had a right to freedom and independence. They were willing to take an action and they formed a coalition, as we know, of the 13 colonies, which formed the beginning, the genesis of the United States of America. So the context for our time and for your work for this moment is what is our grievance? Your grievance is that the Democratic Party is not operating very democratically. That the way the setup is, is that those who have the most power get the most voice and that we have a party that answers primarily to the corporatist interests and not to the interests of the everyday people. That is our grievance. What do we affirm? We affirm that we deserve better than what we are getting that this is in fact a hegemon nation and it's not a matter of do we have enough resources, we have enough resources. It is about how people are going to wield those resources. And then lastly, the actions that we are taking. And so for you, PDPR, you are taking the action of making the grievances known within the Democratic Party that in this two-party system, somebody ought to stand up for the people. And since we only have two parties and the Republican Party has proven themselves time and time again, either unable or unwilling to do so, somebody has to do it and it ought to be the Democratic Party. And that is where the PDPR comes in is making that demand known, to list the grievances, to affirm what we deserve, and a willingness to take action. And that is so vitally important in this day and time. We know that there's far too much concentrated wealth in the hands of the few at the expense of the many, we know that the Democratic Party can stand up and champion people who are running for office who will not equivocate on the needs of the people. We know that we are in a moment where we must address racial discrimination, particularly anti-Blackness and the burden that it has placed on Black people generation after generation after generation and how that burden impacts all of us. We know we must deal with the tragedy that has happened to Mother Earth at our hands and that there must be a willingness to right those wrongs, to make crooked paths straight for ourselves and for future generations. We know that we have a military industrial complex run amok. We know that we have a criminal justice system that is not very just. You name it, you fill in the blanks, we have it. And so by what means do we change these processes and have a revolution of our minds, a revolution of how we operate? It is through political power. And the Democratic Party owes it to the people to be the party of the people. And I am so glad that you all are willing to make sure that they are held accountable. Better is possible if we are willing to do a new thing. And we do need the Democratic Party to be willing to do a new thing. And that new thing is not going to happen voluntarily. It is going to happen because a demand is made. And you, PDPR, are making that demand. Brother Frederick Douglass once said that power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has, and it never will. I want you to know that you are certainly on the right track, whether people agree with it or not, you absolutely are. Because guess what? The status quo is not going to agree with it because you are challenging the status quo to ensure that the Democratic Party is a more democratic institution, a more democratic party. That means that everyone's voice matters. That is what is needed. And then this party must take action. It is untenable that with the numbers of people who have filed unemployment, the numbers of people who have lost 
their health insurance because it was tied to a job. It is untenable by way of example that our party would not affirm, that our party would not jump on desk, that our party would not be the first one to lead an effort right now in this moment to declare that Medicare for all is the morally right thing to do. Hello, somebody. That is why we need people like you fighting on the inside. It is unacceptable that the progressive wing of the party is pushed out. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the corporatists, the neoliberals, the moderates get to frolic in this party all day long and not have to do anything to stand up for the people. That is where you come in. PD, PR, and other conscious-minded groups and people who stand up to say enough is enough and we're just not going to take this foolishness anymore. So as an organization, I want you to continue to push and to continue to push hard because your work is necessary to not only critique, but to hold accountable, to not only point out, but to lead away. We must have leadership that has a vision that will provide provision for the people. And the way that we get that is by collectively using our power to be, in the words of Brother, Brother Mahatma Gandhi, the change that we want to see in this world. And you have taken on a grand assignment. And that assignment is to push hard within the Democratic Party to lay out the grievances, to affirm what is just, what is good, and what is right, and your willingness to take action. So I thank you so very much for your work, and I want you to stay encouraged along this journey of revolution or transformation. Choose your word. We're going to have valley moments, and we are going to have mountaintop moments. But we will never be able to appreciate the mountaintop if we don't know what it's like to be in the valley. This fight is hard, but this fight is right. So keep the faith and keep the fight. Change is going to come.